Okay, so tell us about stage one, Silvano. Okay, stage one in a painting is the inspection. Okay. Now, when you inspect a paint, you use two, two, uh, two type of equipment, generally for a basic inspection, of course. Um, which one is magnifying glass to see the state of the paint. Okay. Uh, the crust, basically, if it's cracking, if it's, uh, uh, if it has got any problem. Uh, the stage two is with ultraviolet light. Now the ultraviolet light will give you a good idea of the, the, the quality of the paint, the, 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 the vanish, the overpainting areas, if any. And with these, when you see any overpainting, you can mark them with a little bit of chalk. And uh, just in case after you want to remove them, because uh, once you look at the overall painting, then you decide if the, 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 the overpainting is good enough or if you wish to replace it. This is really personal and this is up to the restorer. There is not really a rule. Uh, okay. Different school, different ideas, different way of restoring. Uh, 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 but that's it. This is it. And then once you've done that, yep. you give it a good clean, like with a, with a, a dust, dust brush, you know, very soft brush, you just get rid of all the, the surface dust. Okay. And that is the end of stage one. Do we, do we have an example of the dust brush, a yeah. dust brush here today? Well, that's what I use. I use this dust brush. I mean, you can use anything. I use this, which is badger, badger, badger hair, Wow. Uh, which is actually used in marbling and is a softener. Okay. It's called softener, and I use this, and because it's so soft, right. But it will take any surface dust, so that you make sure that once once you've done all this, you know there is not any soft dust, and so when you are actually cleaning, you see exactly what is coming off the painting. And how many layers of how many years of dust do you think? were on this painting when you first picked it up, any, oh, any way of knowing? No, no, but no. this painting definitely was, was, I think this painting was between 1850, 1870s, yeah. around that period. Um, I think these have been cleaned before yeah. and they also have uh, overpainted before. Right. In some of them quite extensively. Uh, we will go on to that later on when I will show you um, why I think that they've been uh, overpainted okay. uh, due to probably lack of technique or of know-how. That's okay. what it is. Okay, so uh, we've talked about preparation. Tell us about cleaning the painting, please. Okay, uh, cleaning a painting, as I said, um, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but in any case, cleaning the painting is about uh, um, get rid of as, as much dirt as possible without damaging any of the paint. Okay. Um, different chemical can be used, different uh, uh, um, tools can be used also for mechanical cleaning. Uh, what we use for this particular painting is um, synthetic saliva and liquid soap. Okay. Uh, these two are very kind of uh, um, delicate, if you want to call it that way, uh, yes. paint, uh, cleaners. Uh, the the syn synthetic saliva is uh, basically what it says, it's saliva, uh, but, but obviously made in a laboratory. It's the same component of our own saliva and uh, is, a, is a lovely cleaner, quite versatile. Uh, the other one is uh, liquid soap. Liquid soap is uh, you can use on a variety of materials. Okay. Uh, get dilute, diluted with uh, with water uh, to the strength that you see, you know, uh, fit for fit, for the yeah. kind of uh, of job that you're doing. Um, what I do, is, what I've done for this painting, I use saliva and then I use a, a mixture of uh, liquid soap with saliva. Which makes it slightly, slightly stronger. The other thing I use is this, uh, which is called polpa, and it's made with a, with a base, a powder. In the old days, it used to be flowers or corn flowers, or today we use uh, cellulose, cellula, cellulose. Okay. Yeah, I think in English. And uh, 
again you put the chemicals inside and what you do with this is uh, you, you, you create a paste that you apply on a particularly dirty area this has got to be really really careful when you're using this because can damage the painting so you've got to keep uh, uh, an eye on it all the right. time and make sure that you don't over clean yes. the painting and you don't dissolve the, the paint uh, the technique is pretty simple once you know what you're doing uh, is just uh, this is saliva and here is some dirt all you do is just rub it gently very gently always look at the your cotton swab to make sure that no paint is coming off yes and you just clean very carefully so time consuming yes yes it is it is it is a bit time consuming you know I sit here with my music and yeah it's a uh, very relaxing uh, if, if everything goes well it can be very stressful if something goes wrong but um, very obvious there that on, as I'm looking at it on the left hand side where you can see where it hasn't been cleaned yet and yeah, then yeah yeah you can see that the line I'm gonna make yeah. a, a, a must be very rewarding though y yes as yes it certainly is because as I, as, I, as I always say this painting uh, becoming my paintings yeah um, I I look I look at every little things every little I see every little details when I use the magnifying glass I can see the way the artist use this brush on the painting and uh, uh, it become it become personal yes uh, you know uh, obviously you know if you have love for this kind of work uh, you know it becomes part of you and uh, and uh, it is very rewarding once you once they finish once they are they are up uh, yeah. on the wall and the people go and look at them and you know see them in their full glory basically um, right now uh, every time you clean uh, depending on what you're using obviously in this case using liquid soap uh, a little bit of warm water just to stop um, the agents working okay there you are and do you dry as you go along as well? Or yes, just, yes, uh, yes, of course. The, just, the, you, you dry the water yeah. just very gently. Yeah. Uh, you dab. The technique is always better to dab rather than rub. Because yes. every time you're using the rubbing action, you, you remove yes. um, particles of paint, even, even the, the, the smaller particles. And as I say, this painting in particular, they are, they are the layer. It's very very thin, yes. and it's not. Uh, uh, there is not a lot of paint before the wood, so you do have to be careful. And they're quite flaky due to the, you know, uh, humidity. Uh, they've been subjected to humidity and heat, you know. And that's it. That's that's what uh, the cleaning process is. As I said, in this case, for one instance, there was no varnish. Uh, uh, therefore, the, the the dirt was on the actual paint, right? Which is a shame because if there would have been a varnish, it would have been so much better and so much easier. Because the varnish, it would have removed the varnish, and with the varnish, it would have removed all the dirt, and it would have been a, 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 a much easier pro process and a, much, and a less uh, abrasive uh, yes. on the paint. But uh, you know, there is not much choice. So we have to get an happy medium and not over clean. But at the same time, we need to clean because uh, yeah. you can see the difference. Uh, you can see the amount of dirt that there is on the painting at the moment. What do you use to clean the, the gold? Right, the... now the gold is a different material. So for the gold, uh, we use a mixture of saliva and liquid soap, which is a bit, a bit of a stronger cleaner. Um, Right now, what I'll do is I'll do a portion of this. Yeah, of fantastic. This. You've got to be careful that you being being stronger. See the dirt? Oh yes. There's, yeah, it's coming off.
And already you can see the, the huge difference that's made. Yes, yes, it is. Um, it makes an enormous difference. This is being uh, uh, 24 karat gold. It is stronger, but at the same time, it's very delicate because it is gold, and gold per se is a soft metal. It yeah. is not a hard metal. So you have to rub it very, very gently, and always, always, always look at your swab. Always, because if the color changes from the dark of the soot to a kind of a greenish color, that means you are actually taking off the, taking gold. the gold away. You are not taking any more, and that's that's it. So now, if you come from this side and you see it, probably from the light, ah, oh. you can see more magnificent the yes. difference between the two. Wonderful. Um, now, uh, after this stage, after we clean the old painting, then uh, uh, we have uh, different techniques and different schools, uh, which is the overpainting. Overpainting is something uh, a bit of a, a discussion. Okay. I animated some time between different schools. Some people think that the, the painting should be overpainted, uh, should be made look like they just come out of the studio of the artist. Some other believe that the, 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 the painting should look their age. Yes. Um, I am from, the, let's say, the, the, the school of uh, uh, the painting should look old, it should not look like it's brand new. Yes, of course. Uh, so overpainting, minimal. Uh, intervention minimal. The strict necessary uh, is like uh, in this in this painting here, for one instance, we had um, quite an extensive uh, damage to the painting. Uh, obviously, in the area where this painting was, uh, there was a lot of damp, uh, so it, it flaked off quite a bit. I mean, down here, uh, actually, I'm gonna put it up so on the table, so it'd be easier to see. There are big areas where the paint is come off. Now, uh, other people probably would would think of repainting all these and repainting all that. Mm. I don't believe much in that because, uh, to be honest, you see the different layers that the artist used and the color that they used and his technique. And uh, uh, I don't see the need no. to change that. Where I saw the need in the face, because the state of the face was pretty bad, it actually the face had two lips, this lip, this mouth, sorry, yes. and then there was another mouth drawn a bit higher. Obviously the artist didn't like that mouth and uh, covered it up and um, painted it again lower. Now what happened is, um, as you were cleaning it, obviously, the, the, the flakes, they were already flaking, they, they came slightly off and I could see the mouth underneath the original yes uh, and also there was missing some paint on the head on the hair there was some blotches big blotches of paint missing so I touched up the face because I did a bit of overpainting on the face uh, because uh, the face is the, the, the first thing that you notice when you look at the paint is what is you know Transmit the, the 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 emotion, the yes. sensation. Yes. The eyes drawn to the face yeah, straight yeah, away. Yes. When you when you see it, they they they, they, they drawn to the face. So yeah. I think the face is very important. Yeah. And to try to make it look like it was originally. Yes. Where where the rest, I will yeah. uh, do a minimal intervention. Yes. I've done a little bit of intervention, a bit of overpainting on the red, uh, on the writing, uh, because it's it is not uh, yeah. of importance. Uh, I love the fact that we can see how old the painting is. Yes, yes, I it's think the, so. I think he's got, he's got his own, his own. Uh, it's character. Yeah, I his own character. It's That's the exact word yeah. I was looking for. Because yes, it is very easy to to make it look, uh, you know, uh, new. Yeah. You know, I could match the color and I could paint them like I do, like I've done for the hair, like I've done for 
the face, you know, you don't see any, any of my overpainting where, where I touched it up, but I could do the rest on the old painting, but then it would be any, would not be any more uh, Pippet painting, it would be Silvano Ciocci painting, yeah. and, and uh, I don't think that that's right, um, you know, for as much as, you know, it might look newer or better in, for some people, uh, it wouldn't for me, for me it would become uh, uh, false. Right. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I believe minimal intervention necessarily preserve what you got left and uh, and make sure that that uh, last for years yes. for the future generations. And, and once you've you've done the overpainting, how how do we make sure it preserves for as long as possible? Well, the, as I was saying before, this painting uh, now I I am not sure because I know that this painting were were. Uh, at some point, um, it's been discussed uh, previously, the, the, the centenary of the church, they've been uh, cleaned and also uh, overpainted. And, uh, but they haven't been vanished. Right. Now, I don't know if originally they had vanished, uh, but anyway, they won't vanish. And that, that is a, a disappointment because they should have been vanished uh, and, um, because it would have been the life very much easier and that's what I will do once the, the, my over, over painting is dried and once the paintings are ready for vanish then I will vanish them uh, with a removable vanish uh, which a, a future restorer will, will be able easily to remove with all yeah. the dirt and, the, yeah. and all the dirt with it and go underneath and do whatever intervention he or she might need appropriate. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. And the, the only other thing, you know, really, I want to state again, uh, which I stated at the beginning, this is not a job for anybody. Yes. Uh, do not do this unless you know what you're doing. And if you want to do it, and if you want to learn how to do it, there are classes, there are courses, there are, you know, for basic restoration. And uh, practice, buy yourself some cheap oil painting, old yeah. oil painting. You can find them in cardboard sales and places like that. And practice on those. Okay. Uh, before you go and touch anything, because yes. I, in my life, I have seen some terrible jobs and some painting they are ruined forever yes. uh, due to the people that try to do something where yeah. they shouldn't have. They may have had good intention, but well, ultimately they've just. Absolutely, they, they, there, is a, there is always, I'm sure, their best intention, but it's like, you know, you could have the best intention to, to cure somebody, but if you know a doctor, you could end up killing him. Exactly. So, uh, is, is uh, not as dramatic, of course, but uh, still, you know, uh, losing a work of art of, of any sort is, is a shame, is a yeah. shame. And so, you know, please don't. No. Don't, don't use this video as, <laughs> as, as, a, as a how-to guide. Yeah, how-to guide, because <laughs> it is not an how-to guide. No. It's only just a quick explanation of yes. how it works. Fantastic. Some work that you hardly ever see, because it's always behind the scene. And will you get involved in... in Placing the paintings back yes. on the altar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there when these paintings will go back, and I'll make sure they go back in the right way and and, 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 and without any damage yeah. to to any of the paintings. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. You're more than welcome anytime. Thank you to you.